so in part one, I changed the shift solenoids and oil, uh, transmission filter along with fluid um, to get rid of a non-shifting issue. I had previously replaced the TPS and the MAF sensor, and both of those combined uh, fixed a sporadic uh, RPM you know, error, where basically it would not understand where the throttle was open at, so it would jump up to about 1500 RPMs and then fall and then jump back up, and then this is just when you're pushing the gas, you're not even driving. It felt like there was a tune on the vehicle, a rev limiter, where it wouldn't let you go past. So, uh, number one thing is the TPS made sure that that was working. Um, I replaced it anyway with a brand new one, an OEM Toyota one, not a not a part store one. Um, that kind of fixed the issue, but the issue still started happening, so... I tested my old MAF sensor. It was reading the tests fine. Um, you know, ohms and uh, continuity and, you know, whatnot between terminals. And it looked like somebody had cracked it open before, so there was probably corrosion in it somewhere, and it just wasn't working properly on the sweep when the flap opens to measure how much air is going in. So that completely fixed that weird issue. Um, but... It after the, it fixed that issue, it wouldn't shift. So after the transmission heats up from a cold start, you can drive for about 20 minutes and it is perfectly fine. Shifts great, drives great, like runs good. But then as soon as uh, that overdrive gear starts working fourth gear, then it just, everything goes to crap. And it starts running really bad um, and does not want to shift into third. It's super, super slow. It'll finally grab the gear, but it just takes forever to get there, and it's pretty inconvenient. Also, it runs like crap, so I cannot use my jumper, my diagnostic port, because uh, there's something wrong with it, so I gotta diagnose that, and um, just another little tidbit, so before you replace the solenoids, I wanted to replace them anyway just for that peace of mind, um, along with I needed to do a fluid change, and I wanted to put a new filter because I don't know any of the service records for this vehicle when I had got it. Um, another way to test your solenoids besides uh, going, checking continuity and reading the, the ohms on the harness are you can unplug the clip that powers the uh, the solenoids in the transmission. There's a clip that plugs into it Unplug that your check engine light will come on um, then all you got to do is Drive it in manual mode so manual mode is uh, low is Second gear I believe so from a stop go to stop sign put it in low You know as you're going when the revs get high you just bump it up to second, you know, that goes to third. And then as the revs go up and when you need to shift, throw it into fourth. So fourth is uh, basically overdrive. So D is fourth gear. Um, I could be wrong. L could be first, but I know second two is third gear for sure. And D is fourth gear. So... I'm going to try that and make sure that there's no mechanical things wrong with it. So as soon as I check continuity, um, I'm going to unplug the harness and do that. And that makes your life a lot easier diagnosing things whenever uh, you think you have bad solenoids and turns out you don't have bad solenoid. You have either a bad ECU or there's a, a tear in your harness that it's not getting voltage also a good a major thing is with these uh solenoids the they operate off of power and ground and they're grounded straight to the chassis uh through you know the the bracket on the actual 
solenoid. So, on the solenoid, there's one wire that goes in that powers it, and the ground for the solenoid is this bracket. So, that's why they will not work, and you might have bad shifting issues if you have a bad chassis ground. Um, anywhere in the vehicle, chassis, battery, um, it may be causing your, your issues. So check those, the very first thing, check all of your chassis grounds, clean all the connections, make sure you're getting a good ground. If the problem still persists, then unplug the harness, uh, try manual mode. And if your car drives perfectly fine in manual mode, then the issue lies somewhere else. It is nothing to do with your transmission. Your valve body should be working perfectly fine. Your solenoid should be working perfectly fine. Um, so yeah, it could very well be um, those little capacitors in your uh, ECU have just popped and leaked onto one of those tracers and, you know, severed the connection. So uh, that's basically what I'm going to start jumping into getting that done, pulling that apart, driving it in manual mode, cleaning all my grounds, and whatnot, so, yeah. So, I think I may have found the issue. I was playing around with the idle, uh, the idle screw to get it to idle a little bit better, and I nicked this wire and listened to it. Every time I move it, it's just, it's in this connector. It's like it's missing whenever I move this. So I'm gonna take apart this uh, this plug. May have to replace it. See what's going on in here. Uh, kind of looks like somebody maybe had cracked this open before. So I'll do that and uh, let you know. Yep, it's definitely that connector. Look, check engine light is on. And if I pry that up. Balance it. Check engine light goes away. All right, so I found the issue. Now I just gotta figure out how to see if it came back on. Yep, check engine light back on. All right, perfect. So I didn't end up having to trace anything, do anything. Uh, with the solenoids because I cleaned all the grounds and I just found that issue when I was messing with the idle air screw. So I will uh, let you know how that goes. Uh, pretty sure that they sell uh, new plugs on Amazon and at the auto parts store. So we will see. All right. What I did was uh, all I did for the test to make sure it was that connector is I wedged a screwdriver underneath the plug and uh, you know tapped it in with a hammer a couple times, got a nice and snug under there. Car drives absolutely mint. Shifts great. It doesn't bog down, act like it's gonna stall because it knows it's getting air, which explains pretty much the entire problem I was having, you know check engine light would come on it was it acted like it was going to stall running super rough it's because the math sensor the you know the meter wasn't working it wasn't connected to uh connected to the plug correctly so you know strip back all the wires everything looks fine it's just a loose connection um so all i'm gonna do for the time being is uh make a little shim out of wood and just tap it under there. Little, uh, you know, backyard fix until I get the new plug because I got to order it. And uh, yeah, so I technically didn't even need to change the first 
airflow meter or sensor, whatever you want to call it, because I, I tested it and it tested out perfectly fine. It was working as it should, but I figured maybe it might be uh, maybe it might be bad, but it was just that connector. So good rule of thumb: uh, check your connectors before you go and start throwing parts at it. But I'm still glad that I got a a new TPS, a new MAF. Um, and I needed to change the transmission fluid anyway, along with the solenoids for peace of mind. You know, I wanted to get a new filter and gasket in there, so I'm glad I did all that work, but yeah, it was just that connector. And I guess it kind of makes sense as well why it would run fine when you start it up and then you would drive it for a little bit, hit a bump or two, then that connector moves up and down, you know, loosens up, but all right. Thanks for watching. Hopefully uh, this helps somebody that has a similar issue that I was having where it's literally just a connector issue and it's really uncommon or I could see it being common. So, all right. Thank you. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Just want to show you exactly what I did here. So I stripped all this back. Just to look and see if any of the wires were cracked or split. All the wires are fine. It's literally just this connector, you know, with these little two clips on it. So, as a temporary fix, or permanent fix, you know, it's free. I'm just going to wrap all this back up in electrical tape. Um, make it look nice and pretty and protect it, of course. And uh, just got this little wood wedge. And not wedging it behind... Uh, this section that is actually a part of the sensor just behind the plug to pull it up so yeah just tap that in i mean I'll, i'm gonna cut it in half so it'll go straight under there and get out of the way a little bit more but that that worked perfect all right hopefully this helps somebody